Hey, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome to the number two show live poopery for a good time call. Let's see. 818 532 1420 is the hotline. It's the doo doo hotline. 818 532 1420. Give me a call. Welcome to the number two talk show, the only talk show brought to you on the toilet, from the toilet. Trademark number two show and uh we're gonna chop it up today we're gonna talk a little bit we're gonna shoot the bull about uh anything you guys want to talk about just i've had people call and give me some topics and comments and i'm just going to give you my opinions and if you guys don't have anything uh to add to the conversation then uh i will completely abandon ship and walk into the mississippi river and be swept out to sea forever so no pressure uh, once again, the phone line is 818-532-1420. You can leave stuff in the chat. I will try to look in the chat as well and uh, and g- gather what I can from there. But it is hard to do 25 things at a time. But I'm not opposed to it. Hope everybody's feeling good on this Friday. I'm feeling good. It's been a good week. I had fun. I was out Monday of this week. Uh, I had uh, I was on a cruise. I was on the Trailer Trash Tammy Pontoon Cruise with Mini Kiss. And let me tell you something. Those guys, those guys were pulling more ass than regular Kiss. I talked about it on the Sister Companion Show of this show, the Rizzuto Show. But I will tell you guys this. I was on a cruise, a floating diarrhea barge. I loved it. Uh, ate a lot of bad food. Hung out with Mini Kiss. Those guys were getting so much ass. They were really getting after it. And I even asked the guys. I go, hey, man, what's... Mini kiss, level with a brother, all right? Why are your low asses getting all the booty on the ship? And the guy said, because we're little. People are curious. I'm curious if you ever wanted to bang a little person. Let's talk about it. I think it's cool if you have. In fact, I think it's good, you know? Uh, I think it's a good thing if you have tried to do that. And if you haven't, maybe you should. But the guy told me, I go, well, what's so appealing about a little person? And he literally goes like this. He goes, you're built like this. We're built like that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to need a little proof, Mini Kiss. And Mini Kiss took their dicks out right there on the edge of hot tub. And they slapped him around a little helicopter style. One guy, be honest, I was impressed with the size of his dick in proportion to his body. Other guy, dick exactly like I imagined it would be. But hey, God made us all different, am I right? And uh, then I actually went one step further to see if Mini Kiss would show us their assholes, and they did. And I spread one of Mini Ch- Kiss's Gene Simmons' butt cheeks apart, uh, so all because he has a, he had a big old jungle rump, and he showed all the girls in the hot tub his booty hole. And uh, I don't know. That's what I did this weekend. What are you up to? <laughs> all right. Oh, I got a caller already. Well, I tell you what, let's patch the caller in and see. Let's see who I got. Let me get in my little. Uh Uh-oh. There we go. All right. Let me. Can I accept it from here? I'm learning the software, guys. Isn't that exciting? Hit that. Host room live. Here we go. Connecting a call, you are now talking to Rafe Williams, host of the number two show. Who are you? What the hell do you want? Let's talk. Hey, Rafe. It's Spencer. How you doing? I'm good, Spencer. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. So I had an experience that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, so I'm a fellow veteran. Uh, okay. And I came home from Japan and uh, met this chick that I went to high school with on Tinder. And... This girl technically wasn't a little person, right? But this girl was, I'm not kidding you when I say four foot nine, maybe, maybe 90 pounds soaking wet. Okay. A pocket gal. Damn near close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh. Your little pocket gal. You can take her to the movies. You can put her in your little pocket, sneak her in, get her little thimble full of popcorn. She just eats it right out of there. And then uh, you say much. She eats like one kernel of popcorn. Like a little mouse through the whole show. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I come home and we have we have our little fun time, and this uh, this is right around. Just play, July what'd you do? Time. Play checkers so or I'm something? Like, hey. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I I brought her to a family event. And everybody thought that I was a pedophile because I was banging a 12-year-old. And it's like, no, 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 she's 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 20 years old. Like, 
Just because she looks like a 12-year-old. Yeah. Doesn't make her a 12-year-old. So you feel awkward. And, uh, oh, at, at that point I was like, yeah, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to abandon ship on, on this situation. Oh, you broke up with her over it. Oh yeah. This was like, this is, this, this was a fun experience and a fun story to tell, but this is a, yeah, I'm done. Like cut it off right there. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All right. Was that the end of the story? Yeah, just about. Uh, How did you break? Let me ask you. I wanted to ask you about. Hold on, let me ask you a question. How did you break it off with the girl? Like, how did you go about telling her? Did you just let it fade into the night, or did you, were you did you level with her and be like, "Hey, you're cool, but people think I'm a pedo, and that's freaking me out." Uh, it was more of a let it fade out. Oh. Because I was like, "Well, I'm getting ready to leave again, so it's not." gonna happen anything serious so okay all right that makes sense what was your question for me so i got a girlfriend that lives down in carbondale and okay i know that you spent some time down there yeah yeah and there's some there's some sketchy areas uh around the area down there and i wanted to see if you had any fun stories to tell Oh, okay. Let me ruminate on that while I address the other situation. Good talking to you, buddy. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna drop you and just chat about those two things. Okay. All right. All right, Spencer. Have a good day, buddy. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you too, man. All right. So, number one, I don't know how. I mean, if the girl was cool and hot. I don't have a problem. I I like little gals. You know, of age little gals, obviously, but it's like, uh, I like a little pocket gal. I like a little five foot tall. It's kind of used to be my type, uh, you know, somewhere between five feet and five, three. I have no problem with that. I like a little gal I can pick up, put her in my pocket, carry her around, you know, feed her a little cheese cube here and there and just like have fun. You know, she's easy. Those gals are fun. Like don't, you shouldn't discount someone because of that. And I, I I don't know what this girl looked like. Maybe she was a gymnast or something like that. But for the most part, I'm like, you just got to take her around the party and let everybody idea her, I guess. Just make her make, make her carry her license around with her. And uh, eventually you'll get over it. There's, you know, love is love. It takes all kinds of couples. And, you know, somebody's got to, somebody's got to, got to love even the gals that look like they might be younger than they are. And uh, as long as she was of age, I don't know, man. I think maybe you should have sought out a little longer, dude. I mean, you were in Japan anyway. Those gals are tiny too. So it's like, uh, you know, you were out at sea and hopefully she didn't take it too hard. That kind of hurts to hear that uh, you broke it off with her just because of her size and stature. That's no reason to break it off with somebody. Body positivity on the number two show, no matter how big you are or what size butthole you have. Whether you're a big turd or a little turd or medium-sized turd or even diarrhea. We love you here at the number two show. As far as Carbondale goes, I spent some time in Carbondale, Illinois. For those people out there on YouTube who don't know what that is, that's the home of SIU, Southern Illinois University, which in the 90s and 2000s was voted top 10 party schools consistently across the nation. It was like Arizona State and SIU were always on this list. Not a great place for an education, not going to lie to you, was not... Not, at least not a book education. It was a great place to get STDs and party. And I spent a lot of time down there. I got, they used to, uh, they have a thing called the strip in Carbondale. It's like the main drag and every Halloween they would shut it down. And boy, I got maced a lot down there. I got maced four or five Halloweens in a row by the police. They would, uh, cause uh, they take over the strip and then, uh, like the students would take over the street and it was a fun little Halloween, you know, devil's night game. Nobody was really getting hurt, but the cops didn't like it. And they would shoot tear gas out into the, uh, uh the crowd to disperse us. And it, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, the place I've been maced the most is Carbondale, Illinois. And I breathed it in. Did it hurt? Hell yeah, it hurt. But we had a good time. And, uh, the cool thing about Carbondale was the bar age, somehow the city ordinance, the bar age was 19. So there were a lot of bar fights. I got to a lot of bar fights in Carbondale. I'm not proud of that, but I was very much my roadhouse era. It was my Dalton uh, Wade Garrett era. And a lot of that stemmed from the fact that it was a 19 year old bar age in Carbondale, man, it made it so strange because 
basically you would have to get a 21 year old friend to buy you liquor at the liquor store no one had money we were scraping chains together out of ashtrays and couches and we were getting uh there was a malt liquor called tiger eye it's called the tiger eye god if we could find it let me see if i can find that uh tiger eye malt liquor god i hope i can find it that'll be the funniest thing in the world Mm, that ain't it it wasn't that it wasn't that nice of a bottle 40 ounce see if we get a little different result now we're talking yeah anyway we had this tiger eye malt liquor right and kind of like an oe or a mickey's or something like that um i'll look for it man i wish it would pop up because it was so funny but there was a tiger on the inside of the label so you knew you were drunk if you reached the tiger's eye because it was like such a high percentage of alcohol so we drink that and we drink banana red mad dog because it was cheap uh and i don't know if you know about those two fuels mixed together but that is basically like jet fuel for getting into a fight um but the problem was we'd get drunk at home and then we'd be like let's go to the bar and talk to some ladies but nobody wants to talk to a dude at a bar who can't buy them a drink so it was just basically a bunch of drunk, horny, 19-year-old guys frustrated that the girls were talking to all the other guys, and eventually somebody bumped bump shoulders with you, you'd get into a big fight, you'd go out in the parking lot, you'd end up fighting a whole bunch of people out there. In fact, there was a place, this is wild, my uncle owned it. My uncle was a, was a big Harley Davidson biker club leader. Uh, Storm Riders, actually, was the name of his club, and they had... Uh, quite a reputation and affiliation nice guy love the guy he owned a place so in carbondale there was a town called DeSoto, illinois that was next door okay and in DeSoto, that's where all the strip clubs were because there was a strip club ordinance in carbondale you couldn't have uh, any naked boobies or anything like that so all the college guys would drive to this next town over and dude it was like the double deuce it was like the the town in roadhouse and uh somehow my uncle had these unsanctioned boxing matches in this place it was called changes nightclub and he had uh strippers but then like every uh i think it was like thursday night or something he would have a boxing ring built and you could just sign up to box you didn't have to be a boxer it was basically like guys from towns that would be like hey this is the tough guy in our town who's the tough guy in your town and then you would sign that person up uh they'd sign some sort of waiver which i'm sure would not have held up in court uh, and then you would just uh, watch two guys from neighboring towns beat the living dog shit out of each other with boxing gloves. And then eventually everyone would end up getting in a fight. There was like a fight that would spill over out into the ring. But it was a very fun time. I'm highly illegal. Couldn't have possibly been run through the proper channels. But, man, what a fun time in history. And I just remember, uh, I was like the first time you got something. Like my, I got to call her, but hold on. I'm going to finish this story because I think it's funny. Um I uh, was the first time, it would be funny because the ring girls were just like, I'm going to be honest, they weren't the A squad strippers, okay? They weren't. These girls had seen better days, but they were ring girls. There were some, you know, and not all boobies are good. All boobies are good. I'll argue that till the day I die. Uh, but there were some long titties. There were some sock titties. There was a, there were some uh, uh, irregular pancake style tits. And uh, they were the ring girls, and so they would parade around. And then the next thing I know, uh, you know, I'm signing up my friend and giving him a nickname, Brian, the love organ Morgan. He's in there fighting people. We're laughing our asses off, but then a fight breaks out. It's the only time I've ever seen anyone get hit with a beer bottle in real life, like in the movies. Uh, and they don't shatter like you think they will. Uh, my friend had his thumb over a Budweiser and was just beating the shit out of somebody on top of their head with like the, the butt end of a beer bottle and it held up. And that guy had a lot of welts. And uh, I don't know, I guess that's just uh, the, the point of that story was uh, don't believe all the movie magic. Sometimes the beer bottles just are a bat. All right, let's take a caller. See who I got here. I'm in the queue and hi, you're live Hello? with the number two show. This is Rafe Williams. Who am I talking to and what are we talking about? You're, you're talking to Drew right now. Hey, Drew, how are you, buddy? So far, so good. So it sounds like you are a man with many tales. I've lived a life. And and I'm someone, I don't have too many crazy tales, but I have a question for you. Okay. What is the greatest prank you've ever pulled? 
Damn, that's a good one, brother. All right. Is that all the only question you had, Drew? That's the only one I got. All right, brother. I'm going to drop you off the line so you can just watch along with everyone else. I don't want to hold you hostage on the line. That is a really good question. What is the greatest prank I've ever pulled? Now, there were a lot of good pranks when I was a kid. Uh, I'm trying to drop. There we go. Figured it out. Um, I would, man, when I was a kid, we got away with a lot more stuff. There was like a guy when I was growing up, we used to smash his pumpkins and he sat on his roof with a rifle and, and salt rock in a 22 rifle. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like, uh, it's a bullet that has salt in it and would just like break the skin and burn. And he shot children. Uh, <laughs> he got tired of us smashing his pumpkins and he would just shoot at us. And he shot my friend Wayne in the ass. And, uh, I think then I think someone's dad got involved. It was crazy, but we, we used to do, we used to prank and I feel bad about this in hindsight, man. We used to like, uh, we used to prank the teachers really hard at our school and I would prank the PE teacher. You know, she had like those parachute pants. Uh, that PE teachers wore in the 90s. And uh, we would constantly sneak into the coach's office and put saran wrap over the toilet. And then she'd pee all over her little parachute pants. And then she didn't have any backups and she'd be soaked and piss and mad. And we used to hide catfish bait under each other's cars, car seats. And that's the, I don't know if you ever smelled catfish bait, but it is disgusting. Uh, we used to do that. Um, Man, shot bottle rockets up my superintendent's tailpipe, which was not safe. Shouldn't do that, but we did it. And um, there was a lot of crazy pranking going on. We used to egg people's houses. We threw these tomatoes through op the windows of open cars as they passed by <laughs> on the highway. And, man, we threw one in a, uh, in a cop car, and it exploded all over. And that was not good. Uh, exploded all over a cop, and he was fucking pissed. And we... We eluded him, but man, he was pissed and he was trying. Then we threw one in a T-top Camaro. My friend threw one in there and it missed the guy and it ended up hitting his girlfriend. And then we all, that guy got mad and tracked us down. There was a lot of criminal mischief. Now that I'm looking at it in retrospect, there's a lot of vandalism and criminal mischief going on. The nineties was wild time. That's all I'm saying. And the early aughts. Um, but we had a series of like pranks that uh, were always fun to do. Every Halloween, you know, we would have bottle rocket wars in our town, which was like, I don't know if it's a prank, but it was definitely a fun time. You know, we would do Ding Dong Ditch. And there was a uh, Rhonda McMillan's dad, Rob, who I still love, was a girl I dated, and he would have like a big Halloween spread, and we, everybody would, we'd be playing Ding Dong Ditch, but when we knocked on his door, he dressed up like a scarecrow in the yard and was like sitting on a hay bale. And that guy would leg you down, dude. He chased us all through town, and he was pretty fast. You know, that guy had to be like 40 years old. He had some stamina. That was a fun time. And then we would take PVC pipes, and we would we would tape duct tape them to the side of uh, the like the side view mirrors of everyone's cars, and uh, and we would shoot bottle rockets uh, at each other, kind of like the game Twisted Metal. We would just shoot like whistlers and we'd be driving through the streets of our home. We only had one cop, you know, All I had to do was avoid one guy, not a big deal. And we knew him. So, uh, yeah, we were shooting like live fireworks and Roman candles into the interior of vehicles and things like that. That's pretty wild pranks. Um, we did set Justin Porter's car on fire one time, but it was an old car, honestly. And it didn't burn all the way up. The back seat got did catch on fire and burn down to the foam. But other than that, everybody pretty much got away unscathed. And I don't know if it's a prank, but I had a good friend named Mike Abadusky who was the craziest guy in the world. And he passed a cop on the highway to see what would happen. He was that kind of guy. Uh, what happens is you get pulled over and you get your ass chewed and you get a very large ticket. Um, but it was funny. And he would uh, pull a prank where we would like go to we would go to get something to eat and he would sneak out and we, you had to run and jump in the bed of his truck or he would leave you at the restaurant you were at. <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, those types of uh, pranks going on where it was just like you could get left like four towns over if you were out with Mike. He would, And if you didn't get in the bed of the truck, the prank wasn't funny unless he actually left you. So it was kind of you learned to like uh, grab your Subway sandwich and run if you saw Mike get up to go to the bathroom. Uh, he also took a blowtorch and cut the uh, top off of his Mercury Cougar 
to make it a convertible. It was not a convertible. He took his dad's blowtorch, and then he went and got a World War II pilot's hat, glasses, and a white scarf like the Red Baron, and drove it around for a couple of days. And then he, we took it through a mud field, and he tried to jump it over to the foundation of a burned-down house, and the car got caught on the house and was teetering. Uh, it was teetering on like uh, where you couldn't get the wheels down. We couldn't get it off the foundation, so he just took a can of gas and set the entire Mercury Cougar on fire. And that, whether that's a prank or not, it was a hell of, hell of a good time. And it was a good story. And Mike's passed away, and I, I miss him dearly. And uh, he was a crazy dude, and it was funny. Um, yeah, nothing crazy. I didn't like uh, I didn't like hijack a plane or anything wild like that. Wish I had a good story like that. Uh, do we have any more callers right now, boys? Call in if you want. It's, uh, let's see, where's the freaking number? 818-532-1420. Let me go into the chat and see what you guys are talking about in there, huh? I do have a pre-record. Let's, you know what? Play the pre-record. Oh, I got to turn this down. I love that someone in the chat is just quoting Talladega Nights. That's very useful for the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right let me know when it's ready to be played all right moving on oh someone says i'm six eight someone just wrote pocket pussy oh Okay, well, I guess I could do a review. Okay, let's try this pre-record again. Technology, guys, and we're live. Mr. Rafe Williams, Jeremiah Job, I left you a f audio. Uh, Mr. Williams, this is Jeremiah Job, re uh, Riz team member. I uh, am calling about the number two show for tomorrow. Uh, I was hopeful. Um, I'm kind of interested about b the behind the scenes, um, show prep and and uh, producing and, and everybody's different titles, different roles, um, and then uh, the the compensation aspect of how you all are paid. Um, it's very interesting to me. Um, I'm a physician recruiter, so um, this kind of interested about things in the background so thank you hmm. thank you jeremiah job for identifying yourself as a team risk member that was very important to that call uh i would all right there were several questions in there i think the first one was uh roles and prep so let's talk about that now i'm assuming we're talking about the number two show you may have been asking about the Riz show since you call for those of you on YouTube who don't know I'm on a radio show called the Rizzuto show it is the mothership of this show the number two show hence the term uh, I am I have co-hosts on that show so let's do Riz show first uh, Riz show prep is wild uh, radio the host Scott Rizzuto gets here at 3 30 in the morning uh, the rest of us get in a little later some everybody between 4 30 and 5 30 uh, some of us prep. I prep in the afternoons. We all have different roles uh, of what segments we will cover on a radio show. It's a four-hour talk show, so there's a lot going on. A lot of it is, uh, and we have a show prep package of things we're going to talk about. Uh, a lot of us don't really see that until right before the show starts. That way it's kind of fresh and organic. Um, that's the prep for that. The prep for this show, it's just me, baby. Whether I'm doing a live or whether I'm doing uh, uh, um uh, some of the old number two shows, I wrote scripts and I would talk about specific topics, whatever I want it to be. If I have a band coming in, I have two people that produce the show with me, Josh and Zane. They're super helpful. They run the board. They run the live switcher. They help me come up with ideas. They help come up with ideas for uh, the framing and the cameras and they get everything set up when I come in. And this is a very much a, a, a kind of a, this is very much a lemonade stand compared to the Rizzuto show, but we have a lot of fun and we kick it and we have a good time. Uh, in terms of compensation, I don't really know what you mean. Of, I'm compensated in joy from this show. Uh, it is part, I just do this because I like it. I want to start a web series. I thought that the talk show from the toilet to the toilet was a good idea. 
And obviously we sell YouTube ads and things like that. But um, for the most part, I just do this because I enjoy it. It's a way for me to interact with fans. I don't have to worry about the FCC as much. And I can speak my mind in, uh, a little bit more because I, it's just me. I'm the host. I'm the number two show. On the Rizzuto show, obviously I'm paid to be in radio. I don't really know. You know, you get your regular compensation. We get paid for personal appearances. And uh, if advertisers sign up and we do live reads, we get paid for that. That's pretty boring, so I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, in terms of compensation, I think I do think it's weird to pivot a little bit. Like, sometimes I wonder, like, I, it's still is it still faux pas to talk about money? Like, when you're talking to your friends about how much you make, or colleagues for that matter. Because part of me feels like the fact that we don't communicate about what we make or don't make whatever your chosen field is, I feel like not communicating about it uh, benefits the employer more than the employee. Because if we don't share, you know, what we're making or, or what we're, how we're being compensated with one another, then, then a lot of the times I think that that gives power to the employer to lowball or shortchange folks because uh, you don't know your worth. And that is a big problem in society. That's something I struggled with when I went from a nine to five job to being a full-time comic or any kind of art or any kind of self-employment is knowing your worth. Because a lot of times when you start out in something like comedy or, or you're a novice at something, you get paid as a novice and you get conditioned into being like, oh yeah, I'll I'll do a comedy show for $50, 400 miles away and sleep in my car for the experience. And at that time in your career, you need that. But then you get to a point where you're pretty damn good, you know what you're doing, and then you got to start figuring out what you're worth. And that's a tough thing because I think we all struggle with self-worth issues, uh, whether we admit it or not. And a lot of times you don't want to bid yourself out of a job. So I don't know. I just had that thought. I think with compensation, it's good to talk to each other. It, whatever your chosen trade or business is, I think it is good to communicate with one another. Um, you know, how you're pricing things out and what you're being paid. Not in a braggart way. I get the Midwest humbleness of like not wanting to brag about what you make. But I think uh, we need to normalize in society now. It's not like when our granddaddies were getting a gold watch and working 40 hours a week for 40 years for the same company. We don't, that's not the world anymore. So we need to be talking to each other about like, hey man, what's fair compensation for this or that? Uh, so whatever your chosen trade is, figure out a way to talk about it without sounding like an asshole. There we go. Looks like I got another caller. Huh? Listen, that's call-in music. Turn it up, dog. That's the sound of someone calling me on the number two show, talking to me through the telephone. You guys didn't know there were words to that song, did you? Neither did I. That's improv, baby. Hello, welcome to the number two show. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I'm glad, glad I got the, I got, I'm glad I got the honor of having whole music. Yeah, you got some lead-in music. Turn that music down so I can hear him a little bit. Even though it is very pleasant, it makes me happy. Who am I talking to? It's your old pal, Electric Outcast, right? EO, the Electric Outcast. One of our regular uh, degenerates in the Riz Show chat every day. And I, I dig that about you, man. How are you today? I'm fantastic, but I'm getting better. Okay, better than fantastic is good. All right, uh, what's uh, what's what's on your mind well, today, pal? Well, since this is the uh, number two show, I actually have a topic that I wanted to bring up with you that would be a little bit more appropriate. So around my, so last week I was in uh, St. Louis to see Tim McGraw for my birthday. Oh, uh, the concert was on Friday, and my birthday is on was on Sunday. Okay. And I ended up, I ended up staying at the um, at a hotel. It was the uh, America's Best Value Inn out in in. Um, it's right near the uh, Target and the Costco. I don't wow, know, I can't, we! I can't remember what street it was. But, Five um, star, but, America's Best Value Inn, where breakfast is served, but you may not survive it. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, but. I actually, but the topic I wanted to bring up is I actually have a bidet in my bathroom. A bidet? And so, 
Yeah, but that and the reason why I bought one is Well I knew when you told me you stayed at America's Best Value Inn that you were you were somebody that had a bidet in your bathroom. But go ahead. Well, What's then, the question? Well then do you think uh, do you think hotels you know, no matter how expensive or how cheap they are, should they have bidets in because in, mm. in their bathrooms because because I can't because ever since I got a bidet I can't I can't live without one. Oh I yeah. I can't even use toilet paper anymore without my butt hurting. You know what I mean? Yeah, toilet paper's for Philistines, for the poors. Who needs that? When yeah. You can have the, the warm trickle of of a water spout blowing your asshole out. Great question, EO. Yeah, Thanks for. Since it, Go ahead, buddy. It can prevent hemorrhoid stings. It can hit, it can prevent hemorrhoid stings as well. Hemorrhoid stings. Yeah. Do you have a bad case of the roids? I I do, and ever since I got a bidet, it's helped out immensely. Really? What does it do? Just yeah. like uh, is it like a water pick on your hemorrhoids, shrinking them bad boys down, or how does it work? Yeah, it, yeah, it cleans and yeah, it cleans and it cleans out, it cleans out the leftovers, leftover stuff that you get out. But it, without out without your irritating system. your uh, without irritating your little uh, Klingons there. Uh. Yeah, yeah, without the use of toilet paper, because toilet paper will actually irritate it. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I've, you know, we've all had a roid or two in our life. Uh, cool, man. Well, thanks for calling in. I'm going to talk about it some more, but I'm going to keep you on the line, okay? I'm going to drop you. Peace out, brother. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, you know, as far as toilet paper goes, <laughs> I love this music. We should have had this on the entire time. The, tr the director's note, this will be on from now on. Uh, you know, yeah, spray some water on your hemorrhoids, guys. That's the message from today's number two show. Keep it clean. Uh, you don't want to have to be putting a bunch of witch hazel on your ass just to shrink your hemorrhoids up. Just uh, get a bidet. And, you know, I don't know if hotels should get on board or not. They're, I feel like hotels are barely hanging on by a thread as it is in terms of basic service. Uh, and I don't know that I want to be blowing my asshole with water uh, from all the complete strangers that have been staying in the hotel room before me. Uh, there's got to be something. I feel like a bidet is just another thing for them to mess with. You say they piss in the coffee pots or they pee in the iron and all. I'm like, well, what are they going to stuff up the bidet that's going to blow out all over me? But I don't know, man. I guess if you're a chronic hemorrhoid sufferer and you can't get a hemorrhoidectomy, maybe uh, they should have... The way they have ADA rooms in a hotel, I, Josh is about to throw up. My producer has a very weak stomach and I can see him gagging off screen and it's very pleasant for me to watch. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, but I think uh, maybe the first step is for a hotel to have, like the way they have ADA rooms, maybe they have, uh, you know, asshole rooms. They have hemorrhoid rooms. Or it's like, hey, do you suffer from inflamed veins on the rim of your bunghole? Then, hey, for $117 a night at America's Best Value Inn, you can stay in our hemorrhoid suite. And we will put a very gentle, warm bidet that you can blow all over your little swollen red hemorrhoids and it'll make you feel better and it'll keep you from having to use toilet paper that irritates a serious condition that should be taken seriously in America, which is gorged, inflamed, throbbing hemorrhoids hanging off of your bunghole. Yeah, that feels right. Do we have any more callers? No callers, we're about 35 minutes in, let's see. Spraying water on hemorrhoids can be a safe and convenient alternative to a sitz bath after a hemorrhoidectomy care. Ah, look at that. We're learning stuff. I've heard stories from other comics about a couple of brothers that ran a comedy club, and I believe KC, their absolute shit shows. Any experience there? No, but I have heard some of those stories. Um... Yeah, someone said they've never seen a plunger... Or uh, this is a good tangential topic, and because I've had this happen on the road, they don't keep plungers or or brushes in a hotel in your bathroom. And if you drop a big, you know, Campbell's soup can turd in there and you clog it up, you got to call down to the front desk. 
and you got to have somebody bring you up a plunger. And a lot of times it's it's an engineering guy, and he doesn't want to give up the ghost, and it's embarrassing. It's not good for anybody. You don't want to send anyone into there. You don't want to send anyone in there, dude, into that little chamber of horrors that you've created. Um, but they do. They have to come up. They have to bring a plunger, and they have to plunge your toilet. And a lot of times there's a lot of shame and guilt associated with that because, you know, you dropped a big stinky mud pie in there, and then you clogged up your toilet. And uh, you feel like you're a disgusting human being for that. But you're not. You're just a regular person with big old fat turds. And that's okay. It's not a big deal. I got one more caller. I think I'm going to take one more call, and then we're going to wrap this puppy up. This has been a very fun episode for me. I hope you guys have had fun. I like the poopery. I like kind of like spreading it all around and uh, seeing what, what comes up. Hopefully this uh, this call will not disappoint. Let's see. Oh, wait. I'm trying to answer my own call. That's embarrassing. Call in queue. Hello. You're live with the number two show host with the most... Talk to me, you dingleberry, you Rafe head. What's going on? Hi, Rafe. I actually, this is Becky. I don't even have a question. I just wanted to tell you how absolutely amazing I think you are. My huh. husband and I think that you're like the best addition to the show. You are favorite part of it. And like your ability to take some kind of random, just basic topic and turn it into this adventurous story is my favorite type of humor in the world. So I just wanted to send you some love and tell you you're amazing. Aww. And thank you for like making every morning so fun. Well, Becky, thank you very, very much. That was a sweet, useless piece of information to put, call in and give me. I'm just kidding. I love you. You're the best. I love hearing stuff like I love when people are positive and they're not shithead trolls. So I appreciate you. I love you. And keep listening and keep watching the number two show. Okay. You have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Gotta love a Becky. I like more Beckys in my life. I got a few. You know what? I'm surrounded by. I have a lot of good women in my life that that build me up and treat me good. And I'm a very lucky guy in that aspect. Uh, and I'm adding Becky to that list right now. Becky, you're fucking on the list. So thanks a lot for being another good woman propping up a man in this world. I love you. All right, let's see who the hell else is calling in. They better not, and if and honestly, guys, we could just make this a show where you all compliment me. My ego would love that. If you just want to call in and tell me how fucking awesome I am, I could use that. I could use that because by the time I've gotten out of the shower every morning, I've relived every bad thing I've ever done in my life and and every bad conversation I've ever had, uh, every dumb thing I've ever said, and uh, I hate myself before I'm even towel dried in the mornings. So. Anything to offset that. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty cool. So anyway, let's take this call. It's probably a troll. It's going to tell me to kill myself, and that's fine. You got to edit that out. I might get flagged on YouTube. Hello. Welcome to the number two show. Don't tell me I'm a bad person. Oh, no, no, not at all. I was just thinking when you were putting a name Becky on the list, I've got an ex-wife named Becky that I'd be happy to give you because she's definitely not on my list, but... Right. Reason being, uh, <laughs> listen to uh, who am I talking to? Every day, every day. All right, you listen every day. Cool. All right, I'm assuming you're talking yeah. about the Rizzuto then, show because I don't do this show every day. I know we were worried after the first of the year because you went the longest stretch and there wasn't any new number two shows. Oh, no, I'm back, so baby. Gonna... We were inking a deal yeah. with Megaphone. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, getting up there in age and having all kinds of dental issues, but I can't chew pork steaks and pork chops and T-bones like I used to. But I, I remember one time you kind of gave your uh, recipe for preparing pork steaks and getting them good and tender. I didn't know if you could just kind of run over that quick and I could write it down. Yeah, I'll be happy to do that. We'll make this a cooking segment. Do we have the cooking segment slide over there, boys? We can throw up. Let's call this the courtesy flush. <laughs> That's the cooking segment. The Courtesy Flush cooking segment brought to you by a man who's old and needs dental work. All right, here's the deal, brother. What's your name, man? Danny. All right, Danny, I'm dropping in. I'm going to give you the recipe so you get a pen and a paper. And, and are you watching on the live? Uh, yeah, looking forward to meeting you in uh, Litchfield on the 8th of April. That's just about 10 miles from the house here. Oh, the solar eclipse. Yes, we'll be talking about that next week. All right, brother, it was good talking to you, man recipes coming at you it'll be live and it'll be live on the 
uh, screen. Here we go. Awesome. All right, buddy. See you. All right. For those of you that don't know, the number two show, I'm getting a lot of calls have to do with the sister program, the Rizzuto show, which is a natural progression when you're doing stuff as an offshoot of another show. But Danny wanted to know my pork steak. Now, I'm known in St. Louis as Captain Pork Steak. I am the leader of the Pork Steak Army, the number one resistance for quality, affordable, family treat meats in St. Louis. And a pork steak for the rest of the world, it's, it's a St. Louis thing. I believe it's called a pork shoulder cut or a pork shoulder steak. If you're like, how do I get one? You got to go in and ask for a thin cut or a medium cut pork shoulder steak. And they will get it for you in any butcher shop or deli that's worth their goddamn salt. I promise you that. And if they don't know what you're talking about, you turn around, you walk out, you stop in the doorway, you give them two middle fingers and you tell them they're a fucking hack. And that they wouldn't know a good butcher if one came and chopped them up on their own assholes. And then, you know, you probably get thrown out of a Publix or something like that. But whatever. Do it anyway. The way I like to cook my pork steaks, uh, here's my thing. I'm not a big, I, if you got to hide something in barbecue sauce, you fucked up. What you do is you pre-treat the pork steaks, okay? You get a mix of salt, pepper, and Worcestershire sauce. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Not damn sure I ain't going to spell it for you. But you know what I'm talking about, Worcestershire sauce. You get that. You soak the pork steaks in it. You brine them. You put them in a, in a plastic bag. You put them in the fridge. Maybe anywhere between four hours and overnight. Whatever. Two hours in a pinch. You get them out. You take a little bit of Montreal steak seasoning now that they're all wet and brined, and you slap that on there. And you put them on the grill. You put them on at a reasonable degree, preferably a grill. You can broil them if you if you need to. And you cook them. And that's all you need, man. You just cook them. And if you cook them the right way, not too high a heat, you don't want them to curl up like the Wicked Witch's legs. You know, if it curls up and it's holding the juice, all the juice, you cooked them too hot, brother. You can't do that. You got to put them on there, flat, indirect, or direct. You start them on direct heat, you sear them, then you put them in indirect heat. Anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes, you'll know when they're done. It is pork, so don't, don't get too crazy. You want to make sure they're cooked all the way through. Then you pull them off. You don't need steak sauce. You don't need barbecue sauce. Those bad boys are going to be ready to eat. And, Danny, that is the secret Captain Pork Steaks, perfect pork steaks. What a time to be alive. Oh, I think we know what that sound means. That means I have crushed it once again on the number two show. You guys have been a great audience out there alive. I had a lot of fucking fun today talking to you guys, man. You brought up some good topics. Some of you brought no topics at all, and that's okay. It's not your job to create content for me. It's my job to create content for you, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing it on the fly, trying to use my improv skills to have a good time. Until next time, I am your host of the number two show. I hope you will continue to watch. We've got a lot of cool stuff in store for 2024. We've been having a good time. Follow me on the socials at I am Rafe Williams on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all grinder, whatever. Get on there. I'm on there at I am Rafe Williams. Follow the Riz Show. Follow 1057 The Point. Follow us all. It's all about followers. Come be my minion. Follow me. Follow me. But most importantly, have fun. Treat each other kindly. If you got to use a public restroom, we know it's an emergency. I hope you made it in time. Put down one of them little paper ass gaskets if you can. And if you can't, just hover, drop, and, and move your hips. That's the secret. Hover, plop, move your hips so you don't get hit by the splash. Plop another one in so you can get that ass gasket down to protect yourself uh, so you don't get some sort of weird uh, rash on your ass from using a public toilet. That's today's public service announcement from the number two show. I'm Rafe Williams, your host. And until next time, thank you for joining me for number two show live, the poopery. I love you. I'll see you soon. Don't forget to wipe.